Welcome to the Jocelyn and Moore Show. Today's special guest, Dr. Joyce C. Moore, author of Purple Mind Peace and Rest, Purple Mind Shield of Protection, and Purple Mind Royalty. Today, we will focus on Purple Mind Peace and Rest. Welcome back, Dr. Joyce. Hi, Ms. Moore. Thank you so much for inviting me again to your show. Thank you. The first two times you were on talk about um, about your family, the family history, right? Okay, now, today we could talk about the medical, um, as you being a doctor, we talk about the medical side, right? Yes. Okay. Introduce yourself to our viewer, viewers. Well, I am the daughter of the late beloved Mr. and Mrs. Joseph and Ida Moore. I grew up in Prince George's County, Maryland. I have two wonderful sons and siblings. I graduated from the Harry Medical College in Nashville, Tennessee. I have my license in medicine and surgery. Also, I am a board certified radiologist. Uh, after completing my radiology residency, I went into private practice for one year prior to being employed as a diagnostic radiologist at the VA Medical Center in Kansas. Um, after working at the VA, I received my certificate of retirement after working there for 30 years. Uh, then I went back into private practice and um, organized um, my own company called the Institute of Medical Imaging Procedure, where I developed an intellectual, intellectual property called Stroke 911 Awareness and Prevention. I presented it on several radio health talk shows in Kansas City, Missouri, and also in China. So I just give God all the glory and all the honor in Jesus. Okay, great. Very impressive, Dr. Joyce. Don't mind me calling you Dr. Joyce. Dr. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Dr. Joyce would like to make a disclaimer at this time about her book. All right. Um, the information provided is for educational and inspirational purposes only and not to diagnose or treat a disease or disorder. The information is not intended to replace the advice of your healthcare providers. Okay, so people do not go out and say, Dr. Joyce told me this, she told me to do this, she told me to do that. Okay, he's doing her research, doing her research. Okay. You well, know, you know, a, a few weeks ago, while at the grocery store, I heard a lady tell her friend that she was looking for the vinegar with the mommy. <laughs> uh -huh. Because, yes, mommy, like mother, mommy, mm -hmm. because she had heard a doctor on TV saying that it was healthy. Mm -hmm. um, this got my attention when she said she heard about it from a doctor on TV. I knew she was talking about the apple cider vinegar with the mother. And here's the apple cider vinegar with the mother. Okay, turn around. Apple cider vinegar. Hold up in the city. Okay. With the mother. Okay. I've never, I've never, I've never, I've seen apple cider vinegar. I don't remember seeing with the mother. <laughs> right. Now, now this vinegar has a lot of health benefits. Mm -hmm. It cleanses your system. It heals as well as energize you. Mm -hmm. And also people use this uh, apple cider vinegar with the mother to add flavor to their vegetables and salads. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, all right. I didn't know that. It is considered a safe food because it's organic. And we're going to talk about organic later on in the, the show. And uh, it has no GMOs. Okay. So the next time I go to the store, I'm going to look for apple cider with the mother. Not the mommy, but with the mother, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was some dairy. She said with the mommy, which with the she mother. Made with the mother. With the mother. With the mother. Talk about your experience in China in 2012. 
Well, I went on a spring health tour and visited Beijing, Shanghai, and several other provinces in China. I presented Stroke 911 Awareness and Prevention. The Chinese doctor said that they use acupuncture to alleviate pain that some patients experience following strokes, post-operative procedures, mm -hmm. nerve damage from chemotherapy, or pain caused by headaches. They said that surgery is rarely performed in China, whereas in the Western hem Hemisphere, especially North America, surgery is frequently performed. The doctors explain that when, sur when surger surgery is done on patients' neck and back, it is like cutting down electric poles with wires. My word. That hard, huh? Woo. And they have a lot of surgeries here. All right, a lot of surgeries yes. here. So did, <laughs> yes. did acupuncture originate in China? It did. Uh, acupuncture originated in China more than 2,000 years ago. Wow. And it, is, it is one of the oldest natural pain relief procedures in the world. And at the hospital, uh, that we visited in China, all patients were receiving acupuncture. All patients? All patients oh, were receiving wow. acupuncture. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. Mm. I'm sorry, go on. <laughs> um, so instead of performing surgery on patients with pain oh. in the neck, back, and joints, the Chinese doctors perform, like I said, acupuncture. The acupuncture, oh, okay. the acupuncture needle is a solid steel needle. It is as thin as a strand of hair. Therefore, you should not experience pain when the doctor inserts it. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is the Chinese doctors manipulate um, the inserted acupuncture needle into pathways in the skin that they call meridians mm -hmm. and that energy that they call chi they refer to the energy as chi travels through these meridians and what what it does is it opens up mm -hmm. align the vital energy uh, that releases chemicals into the muscles and then from the muscles these vital uh, the energy that's released, uh, the, the vital energy that releases the chemicals into these muscles pass into the spinal cord and then from the spinal cord to the brain. And once it passes to the brain, it stimulates the body's natural healing abilities. When you were talking about the, the strain, the needle is the size of a strain of hair. That's awfully thin. <laughs> you, have yes, to have a steady, you have to have a really steady hand to do yes. that. It's amazing. Yes. It's a, yes. So you said it's been over like 2,000 years. How many years can you remember? Over, over 2,000 years ago, they have been using acupuncture for pain, to relieve pain, like I said, from strokes. Um, from, you know, after people have mm -hmm. a stroke, if they are experiencing pain or from nerve damage to chemotherapy or any post-operative procedures where the patients may have pain, they are using the acupuncture to stimulate the body's natural chemicals into the muscles, the spinal cord, and into the brain so that the body will release their, its natural healing abilities to alleviate the pain. It's amazing. I never knew that. When I used to go to the stores a long time ago, I would see them, um, I guess the doctors, I don't know what you call them, docs. They would be like in the, um, in, in, you know, in, in, in the mall, in the, um, in the mall. And on the side, they had people come in to lay back and they would do that right there in the mall. And I didn't think very much of it because I didn't know anything about acupuncture. I didn't know anything about that at all when they were doing it. So now well, I know. They were probably doing what's called also acupressure. 
Oh, they do the same thing using pressure at different oh, it was pressure. That's right. They weren't they using the needles. Yeah. Okay, so they weren't using the needles then. Okay, no. that's all right. They were using all right they the were pressure. Probably using the pressure. Yeah. Oh, so over here they cut through. They cut through us like electrical electrical poles. I'm sorry. Yeah, but with, with you know, surgery on, on the on the neck and the back, you have so many nerves that's passing through those areas, going from the brain into the rest of the body, from the brain to the rest of the body, that the Chinese doctor said that's why we don't do surgery on necks, backs, and joints. We do acupuncture. When you we let the body it, heal itself using its own vital energy. When you think about it. You wanted are all these surgeries here necessary, you know, are they, are they really necessary? Well, I don't want you to answer that, but it seems like they have their stuff more together than what we do over here. Seems like more like it's money, money, money over here. Well, that's another story. Seems like it's money, money over here, all those surgeries. Okay, I'm not a doctor. But that's what it seems like. All right, let's, let's move on. Okay, what inspired you to go to uh, medicine and why be a radiologist? Well, at a very early age, even before I started school at the age of five years old, mm -hmm. I told my parents that I wanted to be a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. And I am blessed that my parents encouraged me mm -hmm. and they provided spiritual, educational, and social support. And this is important because, and I'm blessed because they, they did encourage me because research showed that 90% of children younger than five years old are highly creative if encouraged. However, between the ages of five and seven, only 20% of children are highly creative because 80% develop an image a picture and attitude that they are not creative and mm. we are inward we are inwardly made not only for growth but also for creativity so that we can fulfill our purpose here on earth and dominate over the earth now i became interested in radiology while attending Meharry medical college I discovered my niche in radiology while learning to read x-rays because this allowed me to see inside the human body. Mm -hmm. I am a visual person and reading images of patients remind me of art. In addition, most of the radiologists seem calm and peaceful and I am more creative working in a purple mind peace and rest environment. I guess you would say that, look at the images. I guess it is sort of form of art when you, when you, you know, when you say that, look at the images, it is a form of art. You know, yes. but when I look at my images, I go to the doctors, he show me a picture of, of my knee. To me, it doesn't look like a form of art. It looks like, oh, okay. But I understand where you're coming from with that. Yeah. understand yes. that. It's like a camouflage. Right. You know, when we're looking at these images, we're actually looking at a camouflage. So we are trained what to look at and to look for things that are significant and to be able to separate the significant things that we're looking at from the insignificant things. And I prayed and asked God to help me with that. Do you, well, how many years does it take to be a radiologist? Um, can you? Well, from undergrad, which is four years, and I majored in biology and minored in chemistry, mm. and medical school is another four years. Mm. And then I did a rotating internship, which equipped me to be licensed in both medicine and surgery. So that was one year. Mm. And then after that, I did three years, a radiology residency for three years. So oh. do the math, about 12, 12 years after graduating from, from high school. Well, I never would have made it because biology, I wasn't good at. 
math, I wasn't good at. I still have nightmares about math sometimes. So I give to the people who have the knowledge to do that. So thank you. Thank you. All doctors. Okay. Um, how'd you come up with the title and what does Purple Mind mean to you? Well, in the fall of... Uh, oh, excuse me. Let, me. let me ask this question instead. I'm sorry. Could you give us a highlight what Purple Mind Peace and Rest is about? I meant to ask oh, you sure. that question sure. first and then to the next one. <clears throat> okay, so what Purple Mind Peace and Rest is about is actually dis discovering your purpose. We were all placed here for a purpose. And so once you discover your purpose, you can maximize your potentials and dominate that purpose. Not people, but you dominating that purpose so that you can dominate over earth, dominating your purpose, fulfilling your purpose, reaching your destiny. So that's basically what Purple Mind, Peace and Rest is about. And so what I discuss in this book is the power of positive thinking, creativity. You have to have, you have to be in a positive framework to create. That's my thought. Right. And, uh, and also it contains charts explaining the law of attraction, mm -hmm. therapeutic organic oils, the importance of drinking water, oh, right. ingredients and foods to avoid to help prevent aging and heart disease, strokes, Alzheimer's disease, and treatment without drugs for social anxiety disorders in both children and adults. And this book has so much more. It has a glossary in the back and it has mm -hmm. Um, charts in the back because this is a lot of information. I try to break it down. And, and make right. It okay. Um, can you give me some examples? Examples. You, you, when you talk about for. Um, you would talk about the modern technology can either benefit or harm people and the planet. Could you give some examples how it could harm the people of the planet? Give examples about that. Okay, so um, so basically, what I was what I'm saying is that I relate what I read in the Bible, mm -hmm. the scriptures that I read in the Bible, I relate them to science. And right. most people don't realize that science and theology are very much uh, related. related. Mm -hmm. um, and so just from, from reading, from, from seeing what the technology is doing now, for instance, um, there are foods, fruits, and vegetables mm -hmm. that do not contain seeds. Mm -hmm. And so if we look in the Bible at Genesis um, 1, 29, mm -hmm. uh, in that verse, let's see, and let just excuse me for one moment. Okay. You said scripture. Okay, so this is this is scripture. I think uh, the beginning of the Bible, right? G G Genesis. Yeah. yeah. And we're talking about genes. So Genesis has the, the, the root word genes in it. So if we look at Genesis 1.29 in the Bible. So excuse, before we go on, so you, you're going to talk about how this relate, how your books relate to the God, right? This is what you're talking about right now. How does your relationship with God relate to your book? So you talk about Genesis. So that's what you're going to talk about now, right? Genesis yeah. 1, verse exactly. 29. How yeah, does exactly. My relationship with God stems from being raised in a family with mm -hmm. a faith-based heritage. Mm -hmm. And then from that, I had a real experience of God in 1993 while in Savannah, Georgia, attending a banquet for women of color in the struggle called the Consortium of Doctors. Excuse me for a second. What does that mean, Consortium of Doctors? What banquet. Is that? Ban banquet. Oh, oh. Ban banquet for doctors. The, the 
the event that I attended was called a banquet mm -hmm. for women of color in okay. the struggle. And oh, the, the okay. term for that was consortium of doctors. And it says consortium because it was a banquet, not only of medical doctors, but doctors with PhD in different disciplines. So okay. I was there and there were other doctors in medicine, there were doctors in education and science and many other disciplines. So we all were there because of contributions to society in medicine, education, and many other disciplines. And so at that time, the Lord revealed to me that I knew 90% of the population mm -hmm. about medicine and science. Now, the Lord revealed that to me. So I was like, wow. And he said what he wanted me to do was mm -hmm. to learn of him. So I did what the Lord instructed. And daily I pray. I read the word of God. I study the word of God. And I meditate on his word. And so from doing this, I realized that God's word confirms that scientific research and modern technology can either benefit or harm people and the planet. Not just people, but the planet, Earth as well. Yeah, that's what I was talking about a little bit earlier. I was moving ahead of myself. So give me some examples of that. Give me some examples of that. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, okay. so... For example, scientific research and modern technology, they use genetically modified organisms, and that's AKA, um, and that's so the audience can know. Okay, okay, all right, okay. Gotcha. Genetically modified organisms. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is using these genetic modified organisms. Now, we don't know exactly which organisms they're using, but I understand it could be bacteria and viruses. Mm -hmm. And so if you think of your computer as being hacked by a virus or yep. worm, mm -hmm. the scientists, what they're doing is they're hacking the, um, the DNA of the fruit and the vegetable using a virus or bacteria. And these are called genetically modified organisms. And what they are doing when they go into the, the, the seed, they can change the genetic makeup of the seed so that the fruit does not produce a seed at all. Mm -hmm. And so how I related that to the word of God, okay, so this is what the word of God says in Genesis 1 29, look. And when, when you see look, that's a God is like, okay, pay attention. I have given you every seed bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth and every tree and every tree, excuse me, whose fruit contains seed. This shall be for food for you. So when I read that years ago, I was thinking, why, God, why would you even tell us that all oh, the fruits and vegetables, they have seeds. But now, during this time, we're seeing that you can go to the grocery stores and you can get fruits and vegetables without seeds, apples, oranges, um, watermelons, um, you name it, grapes. Which is bad. You say without the seeds, it's bad. They well, it, it, has, it has been tampered with. It has been genetically modified. And the word of God is saying, I'm not saying it's bad, but God's word says don't eat. That should not be for food if it does not contain a seed. So what he is letting us know is that it's been genetically modified. Why? Because it does not contain a seed. You know, when I go to the store... When I, I used to get some watermelon, I love getting the kind without the seeds because I don't have to go through all that trouble. Oh, when I get grapes, I like to get seedless mm -hmm. grapes. You know, it's so mm -hmm. much easier. You know, right, yeah, I get right. everything, you know, so much easier. And most That's people right. seem to like, you know, they everybody was like, wow, now you can get seeds. with You don't have to, you can, excuse me, you can get grapes without seeds because 
people say, hey, we don't have to be bothered with the seeds when we're eating these foods. Especially if you're having a salad. Last thing you want to do, you, I can put fruit in my salad. Last thing you want to do is eat your, your grapes and try to take out the seeds. You know, that's that's, that's absolutely. But relating that to the word of God, he is saying, do not eat vegetables, do not eat fruits that do not contain seeds. And that's because they have been, their makeup has been genetically modified. Mm -hmm. And this is not new. N nothing is new under the sun. But what you know? you're saying really by modifying, you say it's not really, really it's not healthy for us to eat without the seeds, right? Exactly. What yeah. I'm saying is that, that these genetically modified organisms right. that mm -hmm. cause this cause the fruit not to have seeds mm -hmm. is a contaminated food so instead of you eating foods that are safe you're eating genetically modified organisms gmos gmos okay. so gmos are bad you say basically say gmos are bad for you as long as it has gmos on it stay away from it Right. And you can see at the beginning of that word genetically means gene. Right. That's a abbreviation for G. Okay. GMOs. Okay. Got gotcha. So it has gene in it. So the gene of that fruit has been altered. So when you take that fruit now, which is considered contaminated food into your body, mm -hmm. who knows what is what's going to happen to your body? But God is telling us not to eat that. That should not be the food. You know, when you go to the doctors, they tell you eat healthy, but they don't tell you about. Well, I haven't heard anything about do not eat fruit without seeds in it. Well, I haven't personally heard anything. I don't know. Well, that's in Genesis. That's in. That's how I'm relating. Oh, okay. The word of God that He told me to learn of my word. So to medicine to learn my words so I can relate it to science okay. and modern technology. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So that's one example. Mm -hmm. So another example uh, is um, Monsanto's. And Monsanto's is a, and I'm putting up these so people, they can go online. You don't have to take my word for it. You can go online. Okay. Bring it over some. Okay. Can you see it? Let me. Okay, I see it. Monsanto. All right. Monsanto. Okay. Okay. So Monsanto is a chemical maker corporation. Okay. Chemical maker corporation. Right. And so what they did was they came up. Um, first, they came out with this Roundup. Fertilizer. Oh boy. Heard about that on the news. Round yes, up. Not fertilizer, but weed killer. Right. Okay, so but I'm gonna sort of skip over that and okay. go to the genetically modified agriculture seed that they eventually came up with um in two thousand in, in nine in nineteen in the nineteen nineties. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um what they did was they genetically modified and again mm -hmm. genetic means it has that little word in the gene right they modified the gene mm -hmm. by using genes of other organisms okay to change the agricultural seeds okay we got it. all right and so when they did that, they altered the genetic makeup of soy, corn, rice, wheat, wow. sugar beets, avocado, squash, papaya, asparagus, cottonseed oil, canola oil. All of these foods are made from Monsanto's agriculture 
genetically modified seeds. So do the farmers know about this? Do the farmers know about this? Very, they would, well, I probably need to just go on step okay. by step okay, go. to explain exactly, you know, um, Monsanto's, okay. Monsanto's. So now let's, let's look at the Roundup weed killer. Monsanto's mm -hmm. also came up with this Roundup weed killer. Now, the Roundup weed killer kills all of the grass, mm -hmm. all of the weeds, and they had that out in since 1970s. Okay. So that was what, 20 years before they came up with the genetically modified agriculture conversion of mm -hmm. all of the grains. And what they did was they, they told the farmers that this Roundup weed killer mm -hmm. would kill all of the weeds mm -hmm. and you won't have to worry about weeds. So the farmers, they thought, oh, that's, you know, they thought that was making work on the farm a little bit easier and increasing their crop yields of and course. their cash yields. Mm -hmm by killing off the weeds. So mm -hmm. they don't have to separate the wheat right. from the weeds or the soy from the weeds. And their crops would, would produce more. So they thought they had it made, huh? <laughs> yeah, they it's thought that they, they had, had it made. They had round up this round up herb, herbicide, which gets rid of all of the weeds and the pest without, um, you know, doing any harm to them, but just getting rid of the weeds. But what what they realize is that um, the weeds that that Monsanto's the, the weed chemical that Monsanto's Roundup weed killer that Monsanto's had uh, developed or had produced or made was not killing the root of the of the weed mm -hmm. it was just killing the stem and the leaves mm -hmm. and so the weeds they were coming back stronger with more resistance mm -hmm. to the roundup so therefore the farmers had to use they had to use more of the roundup weed yeah. Oh, okay. So they end up over that period from 2000, I mean, excuse me, from 1974 up until 1990s, they use over 3.8 million pounds of Roundup. That's Ooh. what the farmers were spraying on their crops mm. just to get rid of the weeds. But they realized that not only were uh, not only was the Roundup weed killer, mm -hmm. it was not only destroying the weeds, but they noticed that their crops weren't sprouting. So now their wheat crops and their corn crops, they had a slow sprout from the seed because mm -hmm. this chemical was destroying the root of that grain. Mm -hmm. So Monsanto sent their chemist back to the lab and said, hey, we have this issue. Now we have to come up with something, uh, a crop, a genetically modified crop. Make it worse. <laughs> that can tolerate the mm -hmm. Roundup weed killer. Mm -hmm. In order for them to come up with a crop, that could tolerate, could, excuse me, that could tolerate or be resistant to mm -hmm. the Roundup weed killer, they had to tamper with the genes, with the genetic makeup of the grain, of your corn, of your soy, of your rice. Of the food that we eat, we all eat, that, that we, we eat. all 
Yeah. Right. And so as a result of that, we get, we have the round up to do it. a roundup tolerant seed, mm -hmm. which causes contaminated food. Mm -hmm. And so when I correlated that with the word of God in um, Genesis 1, 11 and 12, that talks about God's law, laws of genetics. So God has laws and he gave us laws of genetics. Okay, just like a man is not supposed to mate with a beast mm -hmm. or mix a reptile with a fish. Right or a mammal with some other fish or bird. Well, God command the earth to bring, and I'm reading this, this Genesis one, the scripture is Genesis one. And Genesis again is gene, it has the root word gene. So we're talking about genetics, we're talking about gene makeup. So God commanded the earth to bring forth herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the thing to remember is the seed according to its kind. So what scientific research did was they learned how to hack, to go into the seed of the grain and put another organism seed into that grain so that the agriculture seeds would be resistant mm -hmm. to the Roundup tolerant, I mean, mm -hmm. to the Roundup weed killer. In other words, now they came up with, in 1990, they came up with a uh, Roundup resistant or tolerant crop. And okay. that's what I just showed you. Okay. So, so now they went out and campaigned and told the farmers, have no worry. You can use all of the Roundup spray that you want because we have these uh, seeds. Okay. Well, I hate to cut into you because we're running out of time. Dr. Joyce will be back with us to continue this conversation of contaminated foods back in August. I believe the August the 4th and the 11th, we keep you informed about that. So for right now, what we're going to do, Dr. Joyce, make a um, talk again about the disclaimer and where can we uh, purchase your books? Let's get that out because we only have a few minutes left. Oh, OK. <clears throat> OK, so I just want to sum up what I said. So make sure you're eating uh, fruits and vegetables that contain seeds. The ones that don't, they have been genetically modified and they are contaminated foods. Stay away from Monsanto's genetically modified agriculture grains. And almost all of that is, uh, most of our grains now, 90% have been contaminated. So that's contaminated food, the corn, the soy, the soy, the wheat, and so forth. And again, I would like to state that, um, that uh, the information provided is for educational and inspirational purposes only, and not to diagnose or treat a disease or disorder. The information is not intended to replace the advice of your healthcare providers. Um, and I would also, again, like to thank my brilliant Purple Mind graphic designer. And I don't know if I showed you the book. No. This is the book. And I would like to. Bring it over. Okay, we see. Purple Mind, Peace and Rest. Okay, you yeah. see it. And I would also like to thank my brilliant editors, Dr. Betsy Hampton and Mr. Jason Anderson of Kansas City, Missouri. Miss Michelle, Mrs. Michelle Welch is um, she is from Fort Myers, Florida. Um, Dr. Hampton and Mr. Jason Anderson, they are of Kansas City, Missouri. So for more information, you can find the information, more information in Purple Mind, Peace and Rest book. <clears throat> and also you can go to purplemindbook.com um, mm -hmm. as well as amazon.com to, to order all three of my books, uh, Purple Mind Royalty, Purple Mind Shield. Protection. Protection. 
She had three books. Okay. As well as Purple Mind, Peace and Rest. Okay. So we have just a few minutes left. So I'm going to ask you this question. How long did it take you to write um, Purple Mind, Peace and Rest, the one we talked about today? How long did it take to write? Well, I went to uh, I went to a weekend conference, a womenship retreat, mm -hmm. and that was in 2015. Mm -hmm. And so I would say approximately a year, um, maybe a little less than a year. Mm -hmm. but, excuse me, I published the book in 2016. 2016. You know, everything that you have talked about today so far, what it comes to money. Oh, it comes all come down to money. Absolutely, and you know, I have a, a, a beautiful, and I call her my sister. She is my my brother's sister, my brother's wife. Mm -hmm. uh, but she told me one time. She said, "People are placing profit right. before oh, yeah. people and the planet. Mm -hmm. So we should be. It should be people first, planet second, and profit third." but they have reversed that. It's always about profit. Then who cares about the people? The it's people. like money, money talks, you know, money talks, you know, well, and when you say, go ahead. The, the money is the root. The love oh, of money oh, is the root, root of all evil. <laughs> of all evil. Yeah, how you use your money. Right. Correct. It's the root, you know, money, Money is good, but it, it can be the root of all evil if you don't put people first and mm -hmm. plan it and think about profit last. That's true. But when you think about it, too, that uh, Monsanto's, they have family, they have kids, mm -hmm. you know, meaning that they could, I mean, this is going to their bodies also. You're not thinking like that. Mm. You're, not, you're not thinking about mm. that at all. Mm. You, know, you, think, you just think about yourself. You just yes. think about yourself, basically. Yes. Your self yes. is first. Yes. Self is first. Yes. yes. And, yes. And what they don't realize is they don't know the long term effects of eating these contaminated foods mm. that have been genetically modified. See, mm. that's still in the making. Now, they have noticed that there are allergies and certain diseases. People are saying, oh, why so much Parkinson's disease? And Especially why so much Alzheimer's now? Could it be related to the genetic modified organisms, the genetic engineered foods, the biotech foods, contaminated foods that we are putting into the body? I know because I'm thinking about I said like the Alzheimer's, the Alzheimer's and everything else, it seems like you wonder, it's like you were saying, you know, and it's not gonna get any better. It's not going to get any better. Not unless we can. Not unless we can actually put some type of mandates on the foods, and that the people are educated as to what foods to to purchase, to consume, which foods are safe, and which foods are contaminated. But I go back to reiterate: foods that do not contain seeds, and there are lots of fruits that do not contain seeds. These have been genetically modified, and the word says that we shall not eat foods, fruits, and vegetables without seeds. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Joyce. Like I said, she would be back with us again August the 4th and the 11th, and I'll let you know what time when we get closer to that date. All right. So thank I will see you backstage after the show. Thank you again. Thank you so very much, Mrs. Moore. Miss Moore. For, yeah, I'm not married. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me again to come Thank on the great show. Thank okay. you. Okay, I'll talk soon. Okay. Next week's guest, multi published author, director, and playwright, Margaret P. Bean. Have a great weekend.